You are still watching NTV Weekend Edition. Now this week, President Museveni met with traders to resolve the ongoing crisis around the assessment of the value-added tax VAT through a program called IFRIS. The meeting ended inconclusively with the president calling for more time to study the case. The matter upset traders, some of whom are considering a strike over the matter. We turn to the executive director of the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, John Walugembe. Good evening, sir, and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening, Mildred, and thank you for having me here. As always, it's always a pleasure. All right. So mm. now, looking back to our previous mm. conversation, mm. did you expect the outcome of the meeting that the president had with the traders? No, it was predictable, as I mentioned, that traders had very many issues, hmm. and some of those issues were outside the mandate of the president. For instance, the import duty on textiles and garments. As I mentioned, that's an ESC common market decision, uh, the external tariff, common external tariff, and that's meant to allow the growth of this sector within the ESC. So the president really can't do much there. Hmm. There was also the proposal of raising the VAT uh, rate, or lowering the VAT rate to, I think, 16%, and raising the threshold to about a billion. Still, that can be accomplished through the normal budget cycle, because Parliament has the mandate to scrutinize proposals by government, and sometimes to reject them and to adopt new ones. Mm -hmm. So a lot, very many issues were bundled together, and I think the president cleverly chose to only concentrate on the IFRIS issue. Mm -hmm. Initially, of course, as you know, he removed the penalties. This time he didn't come with any new concessions. But also the traders were a bit uh, very emotional, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes disrespectful to the president. Uh, ordering uh, yeah they they, they, were they seem to be ordering the president and then they walked out on him you know when you're negotiating you have to respect the other party and for goodness sake this is a head of state mm. organize yourselves if you're coming to engage the president have a position paper Make, give him options eh, so that you don't waste his time so uh, and i just want to i think he was really patient he sat there and listen to all these people sometimes are presenting contradictory things and then was also telling them i've listened to you sometimes you're saying accurate things sometimes inaccurate things mm. and so on so i think that the traders also need to do some work okay uh, in order to ensure that they can get solid concessions uh, next time okay mm. so do you think that is one of the reasons why they start i mean they failed at getting a, a conclusive report or a conclusive uh, statement from the president yeah, because they, they, they made it a high-stakes meeting, they bundled up very many issues, they, uh, they insisted on meeting only the president, mm. you know, and uh, they should have toned down a bit. Mm. Uh, but also the president, because there were some issues where I thought the president would have made some concessions. For example? For instance, on issues around enforcement, he should have urged URA to be more less combative, less militant, mm. as they engage uh, the traders. But he still On the issue of foreign investors, he should have m proposed some way forward, really. Because it's not okay, even in a market-based economy, to have a few players dominate the market. Okay. That's why we have the competition law, which His Excellency himself has assented to. Mm. So uh, that is, at, the, at least he should have instructed the Ministry of Trade to operationalize the guidelines to ensure that these issues are resolved. Mm. If they are not enshrined within the law, that he, the act that he just assented to, mm. then the regulations can help uh, bridge some of those gaps. So I felt that he engaged in more education, really. Mm. And, uh, and, and also he felt that these traders, my impression is that he gets irritated by the, this whole trading thing. You know, he called them Okushaka, Himore, Jechukulukta, and so on. So I think he feels that these traders are really taking out much needed foreign exchange. Mm. He's more interested in manufacturing, in value addition, and so on. And I think that traders next time, if you're meeting the president that you know is passionate about import substitution, then you also come and make him happy by saying, we also intend to do ABCD in this line. Yeah. And just insisting, you know, we have to keep importing and stuff like that. I think that line is not consistent with government policy. Okay. Yeah. Now, in uh, as the meeting ended, yes. uh, I think there was another appointment that was made by the president to meet them again uh, on the 20th. 20 or, uh, June. Mm. And so 
the traders have mm. uh, for a fact none of them has mm. gone on strike again yeah uh, because so we want to know is this due to the ongoing discussions with the trade minister or is it you know in hope that but you can't strike forever because you have a business you're paying rent some some of these people have loans so it's also not wise to say we are going to strike for two months i had some people saying stock food and so on mm -hmm. so forth the, you know this kind of alarmist statements mm. i think that traders should also turn down a bit now because they have the mentality of uh, I mean when you come up with an industrial action perhaps that is when they will listen to you I mean they managed to pull that president's attention yeah, with but that, that but you know previously when you did that the economy came to a standstill mm -hmm. the setup of the economy has now changed you know mm -hmm. Chukubo can be closed and impeded and Nansen and so on are, uh, they are vibrant people are trading you no know? so you have to be careful mm -hmm. you, d you don't want to es overestimate Y y your impact. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying what they did wasn't right. I think you are eh, in many ways should also learn. You know, you can't, but what we are saying that traders should also make sure that before they threaten, they can come through. And also, they need to know that uh, you can't, for instance, threaten that you're going to strike for two months. It's not realistic and it's not practical. And government knows that. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want your aid to take this as a win. You know, they had that meeting with the president on the 24th, so they should have convinced him. But they should also learn lessons. You know, when you're coming up with a new policy, educate people, don't push it down people's throats, don't be too militant and aggressive, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I've seen, looked at their tweets, and it's like they're chest thumping. They're saying, if it's still there, yes, it's still there, but at the end of the day, don't celebrate the system. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the wins that the system brings you. You know, if people are not paying you more tax, then the system is redundant. Mm. So they need to be more engaging uh, with their constituency to ensure that this does not happen again. I think the president can also, I would also ask the president, some of these issues, you ask these traders to see the res respective officials. Because now the Ministry of Trade, the Ministry of Finance, they left this whole burden to His Excellency, the president. I, don't, I think this is not right. Mm. Yeah, so His Excellency sometimes should say no, these issues, these are operational issues, see the relevant ministry. But do you agree that uh, the, the traders actually make some valid points when it comes to the complaints they're raising? No, they definitely. And I agree with them, by the way, mm. on very many issues. There are those I don't agree with, but on the VAT threshold, it's too low. I agree with them. Mm. It needs to be raised. The VAT rate, I'm not sure, because the ES is trying to standardize at the moment. So I don't think Uganda can go in the opposite uh, direction. On the issue of IFRIS and the fact that it's not being well received, I also agree. The URA needs to look at that system and make sure it works better. They shouldn't just say IFRIS is here to stay. But how can you make it better so that people are more accepting of it? Mm. And how do you educate people? And how do you be responsive? For instance, they say people need EFDs. Budget for them. Mm and distribute them what's a problem you know so for me i think that uh, the traders have valid points it's a strategy i think that they failed to well, okay uh, so now to get right. with the parliament just about to pass the new tax amendments where do you they've think they've passed that? actually they passed as they were meeting for <laughs> interesting as the traders were meeting the president for instance parliament yes, was passing the vat amendment act yes 2024 so, and I think so where does this leave the traders so i think the traders need to separate issues. Mm. Issues of tax reform, those can be handled through the mainstream budgeting process, which starts in September and goes through the six stages. Mm. So those, they don't really need to go to the president. And industrial action, because the policy issue, industrial action may not work. Mm. On issues that are ESC related, it means you have to work with other partners. It's a much longer process. His Excellency of Parliament can't resolve that. On issues that are operational, I think engage your MO. Okay. And you are you should listen and you should be responsive because what I also heard is that even after the president instructed them on the penalties they didn't move. Hmm? So I think they, there has to be that ability to listen, to respond uh, and not to just ignore. A, a very powerful constituency such as this one. Yes. Mm. Now, I just want to pick your thought on the next meeting is in June. Do you yes. think it's going to be any different from that two? I, I think, I think now <laughs> that will be the third meeting. With I the think president. the president is buying time. For because as you know, no, he's just buying time to be honest. Because mm. <laughs> if you look at the first meeting, he talked, ab he talked about the penalties. This meeting, he, gave new, he didn't give any new concessions. Even in the third meeting, they'll go, they'll have a nice meal. You know, they'll enjoy <laughs> themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll... I like he'll your choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't see him giving concession. I mean, on what? Mm. You know, he's not going to remove it free. So I really think he's just buying time. So some of these issues can be overtaken by events. But I hope that respective departments don't 
don't take this as a pass. They need to actually address their respective issues. Mm. Yeah, like those operational issues. How do you handle traders? Don't harass customers. They have nothing to do with VAT. Just focus on the VAT. Don't pull people into the VAT bracket that don't fit in there. You know, all these things I think need those uh, teething problems need, need to be resolved. Okay, so that, mm. that, that the way you've put it, it seems the trader has no chance at negotiating some that of these things. The, and also the president actually said something that's very important. And he said that Uganda tax regime is deliberate and it's meant import substitution means you want to reduce trading to a minimum. Mm -hmm. So actually tax policy is meant to ensure that if you have a thousand traders this year, next year you have 500 More. the other year. So no one is bold enough to trade the traders want to push out of business. But that's what it is. You know, because if it's talk of import substitution, that's what it is. Yes, you will have trade continuing, but what we want is we want more exporters and less importers. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So we I cannot, of course, even when you're an export-oriented economy, you can't say you will do away with imports. That's not possible hmm. because you need intermediate raw, you need raw materials, you need intermediate goods and things like this. But the president. But what you don't is want is to spend a lot of money on consumer goods, and this is what the president feels hmm. is is we are not going to grow our economy. And I completely agree with him by that. Okay. Mm. So finally, uh, as things stand, how do you think the SMEs can cope in these tough situations? I think SMEs uh, uh, need to know that it's a difficult situation. Government needs money. Um, we've made our points on various issues. We hope government can hear. Uh, where, where we feel that there's a certain level of inflexibility, then we as, as SMEs, we also have to now work backwards and say, how do I survive within this system? Because mm. those that were imagining that IFRIS would go, I already told them IFRIS can go nowhere. Mm. So it means you have to learn to work within that system. So I just urge SMEs to uh, try to ensure that they fit within the system. If you need skills, if you need to hire young people who can help you, please do that in the meantime. To, to ensure that you survive. Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't be, your business should not become a statistic as you focus on broad issues that president meets people on 20th, then the other, after the 20th, he'll say, let us meet in November. Then what happens to your business in the meantime? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, John Walgembe, the Federation of Small, uh, the Executive Director of the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, getting to share his thoughts and also what the, what transpired in the meeting between the president and the traders. And of course, the there will be a third meeting uh, come June and we shall also be waiting to hear what will come out of that. For now, let's take a break and return with news from the world of sport.